I'm honored to stand here to demonstrate how technology has transformed the educational experiences of my students and how it's drastically improved my ability to teach students with various learning styles and needs. I am currently teaching 8th grade science at Gaithersburg Middle School in Montgomery County, Maryland. And my middle school has a very diverse population of students and we're considered to be a highest needs school. Every day, my students walk into school and they are carrying iPods, cell phones, video games, sometimes laptops, and the first thing we ask them to do is power down and put it all away. And up until this year, the only thing I've had to capture their attention has been a chalkboard and an overhead projector. Um, I've only had this type of technology in my classroom for one year, but I can't imagine walking into a classroom without one now. If you could imagine trying to perform your job without the use of cell phones, would you technically be able to do it? Yes. Would it be efficient? Probably not. But my point that I'm trying to make is, if cell phone technology is available, why not utilize it? I would like to share a student success story with you. Alan Vera Lopez, I had the joy of teaching him for this past year. Um, his grade increased from a 63% to a 75% by the end of the year. You may not think that that's significant, but for an English language learner who is still currently reading at a third grade level, it was huge. So how did this increase happen? When you use this type of technology in a classroom, student engagement increases. Every single student wants to come up to the board to interact with this. Um, whenever I incorporate a drag and drop page, which I'm going to demonstrate in a, in a second, every single student's hand goes up into the air. It got to the point where I had to develop a random generator in order to um, <laughs> make sure that everybody had an equal opportunity to come up to the board to participate. I'm going to demonstrate why my students were so interested in one of the drag and drop pages. I originally had another sound bite in here, but they, they took that out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> students love positive re reinforcement, and I like to incorporate a lot of sound bites from movies that students have seen because in general, they know that I'm trying to meet their interests. And in my experiences, whenever you have an opportunity to make connections with students like that, um, student academic success increases. This type of technology allows teachers to incorporate um, all the various learning styles that students have. I can incorporate um, visual, auditory, tactile, kinesthetic learning processes in a single lesson. Now for my English language learners and my visual learners, I can embed a two and a half minute video clip from Discovery Education. I can take snapshots of the main ideas, drag it to the bottom of the page, and let me demonstrate. It looks like they're like joined together at one When you look, wait and believe. So after the two and a half minute video clip is finished playing, I can invite students up to the board to write down a summary of the main ideas. There is no longer a 45 minute video that may, it may be hit and miss on the content that you have covered in that lesson for the day. For my tactile and kinesthetic learners, it's essential for them to be able to manipulate, manipulate things in order for them to understand the curriculum. On this page, I have developed a lesson that the students could come up to the board, physically click on a landmass, manipulate it, and put it together like pieces of a puzzle to form a larger landmass.
And then, of course, you can show them the correct answer. So in closing, I just have one final question for you. And I'm actually going to ask you to use that odd-looking device at your station. It's called an ActiVote. Um, about what percentage of classrooms in the United States have interactive whiteboards? A, 64%, B, 42%, or C, 12%. Just take a moment. You can see how they're registering at the top. And in the interest of time, I'm going to have to cut you off. <laughs> <laughs> Now, this has been done in anonymous mode, so no individual name has been paired up with a response up on the board, which is fantastic for my students, especially when we're trying to address prior knowledge, uncover misconceptions, um, but we have data immediately after it's done. And since it's in anonymous mode, I get truthful, honest answers. The correct answer was C. <laughs> and I can also paste the answers up onto the board, save them for later usage for team meetings or um, staff development trainings. The last point I'd like to make is that only 16% of classrooms have this technology. If it's available, why not use it? Right now, the, Uni the United Kingdom is at 70%. Thank you. Let me just say, if I might just interrupt you while you're at the board, uh, that we're all above average here. We got the answer right. But uh, <laughs> if you had A and B responses, you would then be able to do what with that data? If I could show the results again. Whenever the students leave and you have an opportunity to take a look at your data, you can determine who's ActiVote. I have um, a database. All the students' <coughs> names are linked to a specific ActiVote number. And I can see who answered what incorrectly. And then I can really look at my data to determine are they the same students who are missing it over and over again? And what type of strategies do we need to incorporate to reach their needs? Um, and if the majority of the class answered the question incorrectly, then I know tomorrow I'm going to come in and reteach it before I move on in my curriculum. So it's immediate feedback. 